All in all, the European Union is firm, firmly attached to your region, Mr. President. We value our partnership. And this partnership will consistently grow and deepen over time. Thank you very much again for hosting us here. And thank you very much for the joint signing of the MOU. State-sponsored hate taught from a very young age, war crimes, threats of a new genocide, making a cold-blooded murderer a national hero, massacres, usage of terrorist groups, usage of banned weapons. The criminal record of Azerbaijan in its short history is quite long. Today we will try to investigate what is going on in the region and what outcomes there may be in the future. On September 27, 2020, when the world was going through a pandemic, Azerbaijan saw a perfect opportunity to attack Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and did so by the help of Turkey and by the green light of Russia. You may say Armenia is in CSTO and for those who don't know, CSTO is basically Russia's version of NATO. However, the key difference here is CSTO only works for Russia's interests. You may only have heard of the invasion of Armenian territory by Azerbaijan that happened on September 13, 2022, if you heard anything about it at all since it's barely covered or talked about. However, it actually started in May 12, 2021, when Azerbaijani soldiers crossed several kilometers into Armenia in provinces of Sunik and Gerarkunik. And to this day, although it's been called to withdraw its soldiers by EU, United States and France, it did not only leave the territory but also launched another invasion on September 13, 2022, during which they did not shy away from committing more atrocities. Armenia officially has requested help, but got no help from its ally. In Armenian, we have a saying which translates to inimical ally. It perfectly reflects the relationship between Russia and Armenia today. You see, in this region, until recently, Russia was the main playmaker. And although its ally is Armenia, Russia is the main supplier of weapons to Azerbaijan, amongst others. To make the matters worse, two days before Russia launched the massive invasion of Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin signed a wide-ranging agreement with his Azerbaijan. Azerbaijani counterpart Ilham Aliyev, deepening their diplomatic and military cooperation. This new triad is very dangerous for Armenia, since Russia is also the guarantor of Armenian-Turkish border, and we know how well those two countries' relations are. During the 2020 war, Turkey has supplied Syrian terrorist groups to Azerbaijan, as well as surveillance and drones of various purposes, which had devastating effects on the Armenian side. There have been some reports of joint operations between Turkish, Azerbaijan, and Pakistani specialist soldiers during the 2020 war. And there is also the Big Brother not delivering the promised weapons. But they did take the money. Not to mention the unpreparedness for the war on the Armenian side, which was a result over 30 years of continuous corruption and the unwillingness or the incompetency of the new government to properly mobilize or try to seek help elsewhere. In a recent press conference, Nikol Pashinyan, the Prime Minister of Armenia, has hinted of placing an order but not receiving anything from Russia, and outside forces not allowing him to purchase weapons from other countries. Things started to shift in Armenia when Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House of United States, visited Armenia shortly after the recent attacks. Some prisoners of war have been returned to Armenia, and it looks like Armenia is finally buying weapons from India. 
The current flare-ups are not only based on ethnic hatred from Azerbaijan towards Armenia and Armenians, but are also geopolitical in their nature. You see, after the last of 2020 war, Armenia was forced to sign an agreement in which some are mentioning a corridor that will go through Armenia and will not be controlled by Armenian forces, but rather Russia. This means the road will effectively cut Armenia from Iran, who is currently going through something as well. Iran in the region is one of the only countries that has the same interests as Armenia right now. That is, another pipeline that will rival you know whose and will deliver not only gas and oil, but also construction of a new Silk Road that will span through different countries and connect to Europe by the Black Sea. The Iranian government has given a red line for Azerbaijan, despite the joint military exercises to be held sometime soon. So why is the European Union backing a dictatorship and not Armenia? The answer is simple, really. The European Union needs gas and oil after the war between Russia and, well, technically the West. In one hand, the European Union and almost the entire world is united against the dictatorship, invading its neighbor, and on another, they go completely blind when it comes to others. We all know that countries act out of interests and not moral basis. However, it is very ironic seeing the hypocrisy unfold in front of your very own eyes. As far as it goes for the Caucasus region, it seems like there is something cooking on both sides. Will there finally be peace? Will Artsakh Republic be finally recognized as an independent state? Or will there be new massacres and exodus? What's your opinion on the matter? Feel free to leave a comment and please share it on your social media. Thank you for watching, I'm Arminator and I hope to see you next time.